In the previous video in the series, we made a plug from polystyrene foam that we machined on my CNC router. We reinforced that foam with a layer of epoxy resin and fiberglass cloth, and then we finished the surface off with some high build primer to a nice gloss finish. Now we're gonna actually be making a mold from this plug. The mold takes a perfect impression, a, an exact negative of what you start with with the plug. That way when you pull the actual part off of the mold, you end up with an exact replica of your plugs. For the mold, I will be exclusively using this channel's sponsor, Fiberglass Material. So the first layer that will go down is actually a, um, a mold release. My favorite is Partal Paste number two. This goes on just as you would wax like a car. You want to let that sit and kind of get hazy. Now the goal here is just to remove the excess wax. Uh, but not actually buff too much of it off. Um, so I'm using a lot of these microfiber towels. I'll flip them pretty, pretty often and uh, just get it down to a nice kind of polished surface. And that's enough. That should leave enough material on there to give you a barrier between this and that gel coat because you don't want that stuff to stick. Also a quick note, so another popular mold release is called PVA. Um, it's a liquid that you uh, can either brush on or spray on. I haven't had much luck with it. Uh, basically it, it adds an actual film, an actual barrier basically uh, between the two parts. Um, it goes on wet and I've had issues with it fish eyeing and, and running and then you end up with that uh, exact imprint on the mold that you're making. So it leaves, I don't know, just a nasty wavy kind of surface. And so if you spend a whole bunch of time polishing your mold and you make it nice and pretty, I mean, I'm probably doing it wrong, but you end up with all these nasty little drips and runs from the PVA and it completely wastes all the time and effort you had on the actual mold surface or the plug surface that you were working on. So for me, I don't know, it was more complicated. It I don't know, harder to put down. It's probably better overall of, of releasing your part, uh, meaning that it, it probably won't stick because it actually adds a physical barrier. Um, but to me, as long as you put down enough coats of this part, I'll paste number two, you shouldn't have a mold sticking problem and you end up with the exact surface that you worked on <laughs> uh, and you don't end up screwing it up with some runs and stuff. So, so that's my two cents on PVA whether you wanted it or not. <laughs> uh, so you're gonna lay five or six coats on, coats on that. I let about, I don't know, about an hour or two between coats. Once again, just to make sure that that uh, part all paste had plenty of time to dry uh, before the next coat was applied. You can see now it's completely covered. It gives it a nice glossy finish and we're ready to start with the actual mold making process. All right, part all paste is down. The plug is completely mold released. It's super clean. And the next step is to start actually putting down the gel coat. But before we do, around the entire perimeter, mainly because I was just being sloppy and lazy, um, there's all this stuff that basically the, the mold can actually mechanically bond to. It's dirty and it's no good. So what I'm gonna do, and you can, you can really have your pick, um, I'm gonna put down some blue masking tape around the entire perimeter where all that nasty stuff is, that will give me a barrier between the gel coat and the fiberglass mold um, from the actual plug so it will release. I don't care about the edges around there. The surface finish doesn't need to be good. Uh, the, imp the imprint of the tape will come off with the mold, but I don't care. I just want it to come off. So we're gonna go ahead and throw down a perimeter of two inch blue tape, and then we'll be ready to go. The next step in this process is to lay down a layer of gel coat. For this, we're using fiberglass number 188. It's an orange tooling gel coat. This is a very strong surface. It's meant for multiple mold releases, uh, and it's different than your actual, your like typical gel coat you would see on boats. It's specifically designed for tooling. The gel coat is a polyester gel coat. We're gonna be kicking that off with 2% Catalyst MEKP. We're gonna be using a dump gun 
uh, to actually apply this gel coat. I'm going to do it in about three coats. Uh, you're going to lay down your first coat, uh, I mean medium thin. You don't want to put down too much, it'll cause alligatoring. We're going to let that flash off for about 20 to 25 minutes. You want to get to the point to where you can put your finger, your gloved finger, onto the surface of that um, curing gel coat. You want it to be sticky, but you don't want any material to remove onto your glove. It needs to be uh, cured enough to where nothing is removed. All right, first layer of gel coat is down. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little scared. Um, there are some areas where it's a little thin down here uh, and it looks like some pinholes that might turn into alligators. I'm just not sure. I intentionally went a little light. Uh, and as I, as I said before, the plan is to do three coats. Um, so I'll let this tack up, um, get that second and third coat on and hopefully that will prevent any alligatoring. I don't know, we'll see. Those three layers should be thick enough and strong enough that'll give you a good surface to make your part off of. After your final coat of gel coat, you're then going to want to let it cure even further, but not completely. You want to get to a point to where the gel coat is no longer sticky, but you can actually still kind of imprint your fingernail into that gel coat so it's still a little soft. And that's the point that we're going to start laying down fiberglass. So for the fiberglass, we're gonna be using our first layer is three quarter ounce fiberglass. This should help ensure that that first layer conforms to the entire surface of the gel coat. If that first layer doesn't fully adhere to the gel coat, you'll end up with bubbles and that'll be kind of weak spots in your mold and that'll be a disaster. So that's why you start with your first layer to be a little bit thinner. Once that first layer is down, we're gonna to increase to one and a half ounce cloth. We'll probably do four or five, maybe six coats of that thicker cloth. And that's where we'll get the bulk of our strength from. The polyester resin we'll be using is number 78 general purpose laminating resin. Uh, this is gonna be kicked off at 2% as well. You wanna make sure that you mix small batches in your cups uh, to make sure that you can use all of it before the pot life runs out. This will make sure that you're not just wasting material. Another important note about both of these um, polyester gel coat and uh, laminating resin is these do not contain wax. You may run into a situation where you find resins with, with or without wax. Um, if you do not seal off the surface of your last coat of resin, the oxygen and the air will inhibit the full cure on that last layer. In that case, you can either lay down um, some PVA, which is a mold release. It's basically a film that goes over the surface and protects it from the air, or you can add wax to either of these to make sure that you get a full cure on your last layer. You obviously would not want that between layers as you're building up, hence the reason it's called laminating resin because it's, it's meant for multiple layers of buildup. All right, so we have at least four, more like five layers of um, ounce and a half mat everywhere. Uh, there's probably more like five or six and definitely the overlapped areas. 
There's a gallon and a half-ish of resin in here, and it's now sat for over 24 hours. It's nice and hard, and really, the only thing we have left to do is to hope it actually separates from the plug. We'll find out if that uh, mold release actually is going to do its job. So that's where we're at. Let's see if we can get this thing apart. Let's see here. Oh, yep, yep, there it goes, oh man, I feel like that was easier than it should have been, oh my gosh, this entire process has gone so much better than the last time. this thing out to where you can see it plug held up pretty well oh shoot it's still really nice would you look at that let's go oh it's beautiful look at that Ah, oh, perfect. Jesus. Why couldn't the first one have gone this smoothly? I wouldn't hate this so much. Give this thing a little, a little butt rub. Jeez, it's so nice. Seriously, like no problems. It's beautiful gonna make a nice part sorry <laughs> nothing bad happened it worked <laughs> oh my god no drama look at that so good it's about time I did something right tell you what let's go so nice all right, so the next thing I got to do is just trim this thing up. I'll get rid of all these uh, nasty edges. And um, basically, it's on to the composite layup. Uh, I'll wax this thing down. We'll throw some carbon in and do an infusion, and we'll be good to go. Now that we have the new mold finished, I can do a quick comparison between the new and old and show you what I did wrong and the differences between the two. Uh, the first and most obvious is the size of the flange. You can see... On this one, there's basically like maybe two inches between the edge of the part and the edge of my mold, and it just got super tight. And you can see how now I have, yeah, around four or five inches of flange around the entire new mold. So this is gonna be significant easier, significantly easier to lay up. Um, this mold was with the old gel coat. There's actually some pitting in the gel coat that I didn't like. Um, it ended up not showing up that bad on the part, but I think that's because there was some porosity in, uh, this is just boat gel coat, this isn't tooling gel coat. Uh, the other part of this one is I did polish it a lot better. Uh, I briefly spoke about that before, but basically since I have to repaint, or since I have to clear coat my end part, I'm gonna have to sand it down and prep it for that clear coat, and so it doesn't really make sense to bring the mold to a shiny surface if I'm just gonna have to scuff up the actual part. So this one is a little less shiny. I think it's gonna be totally fine and time will tell. And last is just the geometry of the shape of the seat. Uh, this one is a lot more reclined. It's also a lot deeper than the new one. Once again, that was just so it would fit better in the helicopter, but it shouldn't really affect anything with the layup. And one last thing before you go, Fiberglass is giving the biggest sale of the year, their Black Friday sale with coupon code BFRIDAY25. You'll get 25% off any orders over $250. That'd be a great chance to buy anything that's linked in the description. They even have a mold making kit that basically has everything in there already. Go check out their website and definitely don't miss the sale of the year. I wanna personally wish everyone out there a happy Thanksgiving. I hope you're spending it with your family and in good times. It's also OSU versus Michigan week. 
Go Bucks! <laughs> if you haven't done so already, please go ahead and like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. As always, go build something cool, never stop learning, and we'll see you on the next one.